Thank you, sir. Delegates and invitees from India and abroad, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. When I was about to begin the, the scheduled time, the hall was totally empty around 1.30. We thought nobody will be there for our lecture. But luckily we are full and people are standing outside also to listen. And after an excellent talk by Commander Sanjay Kumar, I would like to introduce you and share my experiences for one of the indigenous missile systems developed by India, which is under production and also inducted into the services. In my talk, I will discuss on various features of the weapon system and various technologies we have developed and various hardships or experiences we have faced during development and testing and induction of the weapon system. This picture shows the weapon system configuration in which we have a group headquarters in which a long range surveillance radar and a control center which will be controlling two batteries which are located around 25 to 30 kilometers range and the batteries will have a multifunction radar and also supported with four launchers which each launcher will have three missiles and a control center. The detection of the targets are carried out by long range surveillance radar. The data is passed on to the control center. From there, the assignment pertaining to whether bat this battery or this battery is done by the group control center. The data is communicated through radios to another control center here. And from there, the independent firing operations are taking place in tandem with this radar. Now, the system has got uh, uh, fantastic facilities like Eight missiles can be launched on four targets simultaneously. And the system is mobile. It can work in group or autonomous mode. The system is also digital. It, it can uh, be, uh, it is flexible so that any adjustments in fine tuning of the timings, etc., can be done. The uh, electronic counter counter measures are also built in into the systems with uh, latest features. The complete operation is done in automatic mode right from target detection except for fire command of the missile. The complete uh, thing is automated with a network of computers located in various places. In fact, almost all the elements of this weapon system have got computers. And it can also be uh, protecting the system from various multi-directional attacks. The missile is a supersonic missile in 25, uh, 35 seconds, the 25 kilometers travel uh, is fully powered. The 55 kg warhead is lethal with 50 meters radius. The radio proximity fuse has got built-in features with dy dynamic time delay for receding or approaching uh, different kind of targets. The communication between the systems are completely secured with encryption as well as different frequency hopping and time divisible multiplex. The missiles are fully uh, checked before the launch after the fire uh, button is pressed. Within three seconds, missiles, are, uh, missiles will leave the launcher. The system is fully road, rail and air uh, transportable compatible. In uh, this weapon system development, we were very ambitious of taking up this program. Uh, we had a lot of technological uh, uh, technologies that were to be developed, out of which four major technologies we attempted, out of which uh, three were successfully developed. One uh, onboard seeker, onboard seeker program was dropped after six years because it was the weight was high and the range was uh, required range was less. Then we had successfully developed integral ram rocket propulsion technology. 
phase error radar technology and also command guidance technology in addition we have also done various uh, other sub technologies one of them is uh, multi beam surveillance radar the system is under production for air force in uh, three variants uh, army and air, air force and navy the hardware and software uh, they developed for c4i system the launcher we have uh, developed uh, with uh, advanced features various mathematical models were developed for the entire uh, uh, weapon system which can be completely validated with less number of flights you can see the perf you can expect the performance of the system the missile uh, is a solid integral ram rocket propulsion system uh, in which the, it has a high thrust to weight ratio the guidance system is a command guidance system for uh, featuring in the multiple missiles in the air simultaneously they are all coded and uh, linked with the tracks of the target the digital onboard computer system which controls the onboard mission events and uh, pre launch uh, health checks uh, and also it is uh, fitted with a safety about system logics it has also got a uh, switchable uh, guidance antenna so that from the uh, radar we have a robust command link this picture shows the layout of integral ram rocket propulsion system the booster system is uh, located here and the sustainer system is located here it has got air intakes so the system operates like this the moment the booster is ignited it uh, goes up to a pressure of around 100 bar and this is the booster time uh, thrust uh, pressure versus time profile after within about 4.5 to 5 to 4.6 seconds the pressure switch here located here senses the pressure inside this chamber and then it ejects this nozzle why this has to be done is because the the second part of the ignition takes place for the propulsion the partially burnt out gases will be allowed into this chamber and then the secondary nozzle is operated now in all these things this whole operation has to take place all the six events have to take place in a particular uh, sequence within 200 milliseconds sorry so that the operation is uh, performed successfully so to get this technology a lot of hardships we had to face first of all the liner for this ramjet uh, propulsion system is a unique one because right from the uh, t0 that is subjected to very high uh, temperatures and high pressures and the uh, propellant grain is supposed to be end supported grain and the various uh, uh, sequence of events also have to be controlled within a, a, a fraction of times so the technology development also took little bit time around 10 years we had to develop this technology now the propellants also uh, have to be developed one of our sister laboratory high energy materials laboratory pona has developed both booster propellants and sustainer propellant and they are also unique when compared to others because the booster propellants have to be uh, realized with uh, high mechanical properties the burn rate should be high so that you get uh, within short time you should uh, generate so much thrust and uh, they have to withstand high temperature low temperature variations the density size shape the energy required has to be met so the a lot of constraints in designing it will be normally not in one iteration then many number of iterations to arrive at the final required specifications while we are we have to do this there are a lot of uh, facilities have to be established at uh, uh, hmrl as well as in uh, hyderabad uh, so that the development could take place similarly for sustainable grain there are a number of uh, facilities like uh, presses ndt all those facilities had to take place the 
grain is basically pyrotechnic composition which is got a magnesium powder based propellant it is required to be pressed in a number of segments a lot of care has to be taken and it also has to be inhibited with a proper uh, material so that the integrity of the grain is ensured during handling and uh, in another uh, innovative as well as the uh, latest feature uh, technology developed by LRD Bangalore here in which the multifunction phased array radar has been uh, developed uh, for the first time in the 90s and uh, later on a number of uh, variants of it have been realized. So one of the key elements of this is the phase control module. This is the basic sensor. These, uh, these, are, these sensors are integrated on a uh, piece of uh, uh, array antenna in which the 2.52 meter, 2.5 uh, square me, uh, meter sized antenna is uh, assembled with the 4000 uh, phase shifters, phase control modules. Then this is the first time such a thing has been attempted in India and successfully realized. The production of PCMs are done by CEL Gajiawad. The manufacturing assembly uh, of the antenna has been initially tried at uh, LRD Bangalore and then it is uh, transferred the technology to BEL Gajiawad. The knowledge of integration of phased data radar and its uh, uh, functionality, testing, etc. has been um, upgraded by LRD scientists. The hardware, software, uh, development of various radar modules like the transmitters, receivers, signal processors, radar uh, data processors, etc. have been successfully developed and they have also used uh, that for resizing that in various uh, subsequent uh, configurations. The link between missile as well as the radar had to be done by doing number of helicopter sorties in which the uh, command guidance uh, unit part is put under the uh, helicopter and then tried out the acquisition as well as tracking of the target, sorry, missile was uh, carried out by the radar and the complete uh, closed loop uh, of the radar is validated. These are the number of variants of uh, radars we have realized. The first one uh, was mounted on a BMP-1 and then later on it is fitted on BMP-2, next version we have done with a slewing capability. Then the third version we have realized on T-72 on which the user trials were performed. While we are doing so, the number of the technologies also were upgraded over period. As per the requirement of Air Force, we have uh, resized them uh, on uh, trailer. Then in uh, 2013, we are going to realize in a couple of months the Army radar, which is under production. Now, while we are doing this design and development, it's uh, a very surprising way to start the complete uh, you know, design. Initially, QRs are uh, given by the users. We do the feasibility study. Then uh, we do configuration design, then detailed designs, then engineering drawings, hardware, then uh, ground validation testing. Then we do the integration. We do the flight testing. Then afterwards, we do the modifications wherever it is required. Then with this iteration goes on till that final fine-tuned design is uh, fit for the user trials. Now while we are doing this exercise, this block diagram looks very simple but it's very complicated interconnectivity is there between various systems. Now this one would be very happy to come out of these loops very fast otherwise the system development of missile is a very cumbersome exercise. Now while we are doing these developments, uh, we also update our mathematical models for various uh, subsystems as well as the systems. So what we see here in the, is a model of the missile in which propulsion, aerodynamics, kinetic model, etc. are done, actuator and they are all integrated with radar uh, models and target models and also command guidance algorithms. The 
uh, attitude and uh, the control of the missile also are completely fine tuned uh, with these models getting the feedback from each flight trial the launcher uh, is a electro mechanical servo drive control launcher in which you have a processor uh, to check the missiles and also a processor to control the uh, orientation of the launcher it also has got a built in dg, uh, DG power supply also it is uh, mounted uh, with an outriggers electromechanical outriggers it has a self test and fault indication facilities the missile simulators are connected to the uh, launcher before loading the uh, missiles and uh, the launcher clearance is taken like the radars we have also developed uh, the launchers also on different platforms with uh, various uh, uh, features upgradation the uh, the recent one are going to is going to come up in a couple of months on tatra vehicle for army now the such a complex system where computers are there it is uh, bound to happen the number of softwares to be developed for the weapon system the each system has got a number of uh, uh, software developed for their own subsystems and this part is uh, the radar software and uh, the validation of these softwares are done along with the hardware and also with iv and v uh, to see the integrated functionality of the missile system is as per the required requirements now to validate the uh, complete functionality before the actual missile firing we uh, do take the radar the by uh, masts are fitted with horn antennas so the rf energy is fed into the uh, the radar and the complete uh, closed loop functionality with uh, various air defense events are verified and also the maximum target handling capability also with ecm features are plugged into this setup this kind of setups are unique and uh, we had to evolve ourselves while we have to after the completion of the um, design phase we have to test the weapon system with uh, in a integrated group mode functionality the system is taken to the field wherein the group is located and the batteries are located like this and uh, fighter aircrafts are test flown in different profiles the complete air defense functions are verified uh, the allocation uh, the weapon assignment and the firing of uh, the simulated missile launches are verified and the softwares as well as hardwares their functionality are clear now in addition to this after the uh, items are designed there is a requirement that the electromagnetic interference of this uh, whatever the systems we design they should not hinder into the the already available systems ad radars and uh, various other things the system is located um, uh, at one place and then all around the um, in service ad radars systems are located and uh, the effect of the transmission of this on the other radars and effect of other radar transmission transmissions on this radar system are validated and uh, the along with the jammers and uh, the whole weapon system functionality under intense ew environment is checked these are some of the pictures of desert trials wherein all the uh, weapon system elements have participated the another deployment now while uh, we have to do the flight trials there is a requirement we have to do it with the target the targets we have uh, uh, used are nishant targets the pilotless laksha target with the tow body then we have also tried on uh, parabaral targets also we have seen one of the uh, imported targets with low flying uh, capability now the this side is on the land this side is on the sea the uh, targets are launched with a uh, with a booster and afterwards the jata booster is dropped the uh, target takes a course of path predetermined it is got rem it is remotely controlled from the ground and 
the missiles are launched from here. Now, when two missiles have to be launched on two targets, one uh, target uh, will be the main mother aircraft. Sometimes uh, we do um, inhibit the warhead in such cases so that to protect this uh, the uh, mother aircraft and uh, the tow body is uh, also uh, targeted and the tow bodies are also fitted with Lunenberg lenses for enhancing the RCS. Now while uh, we have to do these tests, uh, the user's uh, requirement is to uh, validate a complete kill zone we have to show in different different um, mission profiles. Sometimes we have to do mid altitude, far boundary, high altitudes, low altitude, far, far boundary, like that, multiple target interception, salvo, ripple mode firings. So all these things are demonstrated. And also the, the high speed capability, because the targets have got up to 170 meters per second uh, velocity only, the high speed target uh, interceptions are uh, done with the simulated uh, environment on the ground with the uh, complete uh, weapon system simulation bed. While we are doing so, we had encountered with various problems. One of the problems we encountered were autonomous oscillations in the wing. We have seen that the actuator is driven when the wing uh, uh, was uncaged. We have seen that the torsional and bending frequencies were interfering uh, and then we, the actuator is fed uh, actuator is uh, driven and then overcome and uh, the, we lost the mission. So we subsequently modified the design of the wing wherein we have brought the CG to the rotating point and by adding the mass with the steel panel here we have brought the CG forward and reshaped also and we have got back normal operations for the subsequent flights. And while we are doing so, we had also to evaluate because the, in the case of ramjet missiles, the wing in between the intakes gives a different kind of uh, unclean configuration. It is very difficult for uh, anybody to predict what is the kind of CP variation on that with respect to angle of, angle of attack and with, uh, with reference to different Mach numbers. So while we had to do that, we wanted to measure it, uh, the the strain gauge, uh, we wanted to measure actually the what force does it come onto the uh, actuator during its course of flight. We had uh, de devised a methodology of putting the strain gauges on the shaft, which is the uh, one end point of the actuator, wherein the strain gauges are fitted. We had to carefully select this because we wanted to have the margin also. So one way it is very risky affair, but still it is a wonderful uh, experiment to uh, find out exactly what is the hinge moment you uh, encounter on the flight. Uh, in one of the pro uh, few flights, we had the, the propulsion problem in which the sustainer after its ignition about three to four seconds, the suddenly pressure used to rise and uh, this used to happen only in the flight and it never used to happen on the ground. So we had a, a problem uh, with the two and a half years we had to suffer. Uh, but later on we could identify what was happening is during the boost phase the axial forces and also the, 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 this uh, thrust forces used to compress this particular rocket motor and uh, earlier the, the grain was completely bonded to the casing and uh, when this was happening there was a um, the inhibition was ripping off at this uh, at this interface and that is used to occur only after uh, 3 to 4 seconds and then the whole grain burn area is exposed now we had uh, uh, because this uh, this was not happening right in the beginning flights but we had made certain changes here in the taper where for production sake we had altered that but so inadvertently, without uh, uh, understanding the phenomena, the transfer uh, of load transfer was taking place, and we had uh, later corrected it by redesigning the inhibition, and then we left the gap between the rocket motor and the grain, and it is uh, we had also put the rubber uh, padding here, and the on the front end nozzle end is supported with uh, also a rubber. So this problem has overcome, and we could successfully 
know, flight test the subsequent flights. In one of the uh, flights we had, uh, we have, in fact, uh, the radio proximity fuse designs, we could not uh, validate on the ground, but we wanted to do it before the flight testing. We found that uh, many tri uh, trial, trials we have done, but we couldn't succeed. In one case, we had to put that uh, our missile section on the airfield and we had to pass the Jaguar aircraft 30 meters distance and we have validated the you know, complete, uh, this is the transmit beam, this is the reflected uh, receiver beam. So we could uh, validate the radio proximity phase design which is subsequently being used in various other projects. Now, uh, one of our uh, sister laboratories, uh, uh, ARDE Pune, has developed uh, the warhead because the warheads, uh, uh, you know, while we are changing the configuration of the missile, we time and again request the design of warhead also to be changed. We had three varieties of warheads designed. Uh, finally, third variety was fit, fitting into our uh, complete weapon system. This is the setup for, uh, you know, warhead testing. Warhead is hung here and then it is like it's placed here. This is the, at various uh, distances we put the, uh, you know, uh, the steel plates of uh, uh, 10 or 15 mm thick and then we validate the, the, the spread of the, uh, our pre fragments and also the penetration and also the heat density. These things are tested at TBRL Chandigarh. Now while uh, we, the, some of the flights uh, we had uh, premature uh, uh, flight uh, dis uh, disintegration, so the warheads used to fall uh, very close to the ITR shore. I think our one of the, our uh, friend is there, Rautre uh, from ITR. He helps us in disp dispensing the warhead. We collect the warhead, we bring it, uh, you know, we dig it into a thing and then we detonate it with the help of ITR and PXC. This is one of the pictures where we have detonated warhead on the shore. Now, while we are doing the uh, uh, technology management, we have to take certain uh, the decisions which sometimes uh, if we don't take it, we cannot complete the project. That's how we had initially planned for command guidance plus active homing. We have dropped active homing. Uh, we have in improved the performance of the uh, radar and uh, radar trackers. Then we have dropped the active homing. Then uh, initially we started with uh, composite modified double-based propellant grains, but due to the um, uh, cracks problem uh, with respect to time, we had to switch over to composite propellant. The sustainer uh, uh, thing, uh, configuration we have also altered. Uh, in between, we had to reduce the missile length and also improve the uh, boost, increase the booster length accordingly for uh, pumping in more energy. The systems mounted on BMP and T-72 uh, are trailers. We had to change according to user's requirement. The end game techniques we had improved. This is the uh, single point contact for uh, support production. The, this is the TOT document in which we give every details. Uh, about 150 documents are made and handed over with the training to the production agencies. While we are producing, we had to also change the technology. The number of uh, things were uh, required to be established at uh, the user's places also, the storage uh, propellant operation of the uh, uh, workshop facilities, etc. Then missile checkout facilities. I think I will show one video and I think conclude I'll my presentation.
Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for Mr. Chandramali? We have five minutes. Yes, uh, w one question regarding the uh, radar vehicle and the uh, uh, launcher vehicle. You mentioned in your presentation that uh, it was based on Tatra vehicle now. I understand that there are some problems with this vehicle, so how do you intend to, to manage this issue in the future? Okay, we have identified a couple of uh, other uh, vehicles too, but we have not yet... Uh, received the green, uh, you know, go-ahead clearance. Otherwise, the first batch of uh, Tatras received by um, production agents BDL and BEL, we are integrating. Uh, we have no issue uh, when compared to, but uh, BML is assuring us that uh, they are able to get some more also. Any more questions? I would um, like to congratulate Mr. Chandramouli and his team for having developed this um, much required missile system for use by the three services. Um, this project was started by Dr. Kalam under the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program in the early 80s. And I'd just like to remind everybody that at that time India functioned under the system of very strict technology denial regimes. Nobody would give us any technology. So it is people like Chandra Mawli who struggled for two decades and put the system into service and I think they have done the country a great service. Yeah.